This bus has traveled to 15 cities all over the nation. And if you can make it to tonight's concert, you probably can make it to tomorrow's concert and be just like these girls. Remakes of popular films are usually not well received by fans of the original. However, this film is one of the summer's biggest blockbusters, raking in over $18 million on its opening day. Police say the pair picked up their prescriptions at this pharmacy, along with three others in the area. Talking on the cell phone while behind the wheel of a car can be a tough habit to break for some. That's why before giving out tickets, the Philadelphia police gave out these pamphlets warning of the new ban. Since it began in 2000, the event has honored some of the biggest names in media today, with Matt Lauer being the most recent inductee. Medical identity theft is one of America's newest types of fraud. However, this fraud, it doesn't discriminate against your age or your income. These pharmaceutical drugs in this area really seem to be a big, there's a big market for them on the street. And violent police say this couple took advantage of that market. Daphne and Joseph Feliz are currently at their home awaiting a court date on a long list of charges from police, including obtaining prescription narcotics by fraud. Lieutenant Thomas Alrich says the pair knew exactly what they were doing. There's a potential value that, you know, especially if you're getting it paid by the insurance company and that you only paid the copay, that you could potentially uh, profit from the selling of narcotics. We don't know that that's a situation here. Uh, it could be, you know, uh, some type of, you know, addictive use behavior, but um, that part of the investigation is continuing. Police say the scam began over a year ago when Daphne Felice, who worked as a nurse at a South Jersey cancer treatment center, would call fake prescriptions for painkillers in her mother's name. Then husband Joseph would drive to different pharmacies to pick up the drugs. Some people who live near the cancer center are aware of the drug's financial benefits. And an 80 milligram tablet of Oxycontin might bring $50 a piece. So if somebody can get a script for 30 of them, they've just made themselves some money. Police say the pair picked up their prescriptions at this pharmacy, along with three others in the area. Obviously, if you're going to different pharmacies, you're trying to conceal what you're doing because it would red flag if you kept using the same pharmacy or tried multiple script prescriptions before the pills expired. So Investigators are now searching pharmacies all over South Jersey and what they believe are other locations where the husband and wife picked up various painkillers. In Vineland, New Jersey, Bryant Madrick, Fox 29 News. Philadelphia has continued handing out traffic tickets to those caught driving while on a cell phone. Earlier this week, I got a chance to find out more about how the new city law is working. You see them in cars just about everywhere. Everybody's got to make a call. It's like they got to answer that call when it comes. And when it comes, if motorists pick up a phone while driving, the next thing that comes is a ticket. Since December, Philadelphia police have enforced a law they say is working. We think it's a good law. Uh, we're enforcing this one now. It's only a few months in, and we've written over 3,000 of them. The law has many supporters like Luis Rodriguez, who knows firsthand the downside of distracted driving. I've seen plenty of accidents from my own eyes with people being on cell phone. I, I got hit one time for person being on cell phone, so yeah, I, th I think it's a good idea. Wireless retailers across the area have seen a rise in hands-free devices from many drivers looking to avoid the $75 to $300 tickets. We've seen a good number of people buying more accessories when it comes to Bluetooth and uh, headsets, you know, the wired headsets, um, which has been good. And I think that's a reflection of the new law which just came up. Talking on the cell phone while behind the wheel of a car can be a tough habit to break for some. That's why before giving out tickets, the Philadelphia police gave out these pamphlets warning of the new ban. However, if a statewide ban passes across the state of Pennsylvania, the penalties can carry a lot more weight. If it, if it gets adopted by the state of Pennsylvania, then it becomes a motor vehicle code violation, just like running a red light. So when you're stopped, you'll be given a, a traffic summons, which will go against your license. It'll be recorded by the state. Despite the apparent success, the ban does have skeptics. There's a ton of distractions that people have, and um, I don't know if them banning it will really change anything. And for many drivers, no law is a deterrent to answering that call. Reporting for Temple Update, I'm Bryant Madrick. Action. I just want to go home. Drama. Oh, Even comedy. Dude, I'm from Detroit. All seen on screen in The Karate Kid from Columbia Pictures, the hit remake of the classic 80s film. It features Jaden Smith, Will and Jada Pinkett Smith's son, in his first starring role. As Dre, a troubled young man, 
He Please. fights back against bullies with the help of his mentor. Smith says there's a lot of hard work behind what you see on the big screen. The training that you had to go through for this movie, how long was it and how intense really was that training? It was um, three months mm -hmm. before and four months during and then now training again. Smith adds that he's been studying martial arts since he was three. His co-star in the film, Jackie Chan, says Jaden's intense training goes way beyond just learning how to kick and punch. After he learned martial art, any martial art, then you respect your country, you respect your body, you respect everything, your family, everything. Remakes of popular films are usually not well received by fans of the original. However, this film is one of the summer's biggest blockbusters, breaking in over $18 million on its opening day. And while the focus may be on the stars of the movie, it was also on the hundreds of young people who lined up to see the pair during the film's Dallas premiere. Hey, what do you make of all these fans, these young people out here just to see you? I think it's great that they're all out here to support the movie. And kids and their families are packing movie theaters all over the country to see these stars. Reporting in Dallas, Bryant Madrick, NABJ Media. Well, if you're not the type of person who watches what they eat, a new fast food sanction is making consumers more aware of what they're putting into their bodies. The soda tax isn't the only proposal that has Philadelphia residents concerned. Updates Christina Leon has more on Mayor Nutter's efforts to institute a trash collection tax. Temple is reaching out to help the North Philadelphia community this tax season. Members of Accounting Society Beta Alpha Psi, along with faculty and community members, make up the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. While the effects from the earthquake in Haiti a few months ago are still being felt, but one Temple organization held an event to see what they could do to help. Update Sydney Grant was there. The university has named Kenneth Blank its new Senior Vice Provost for Research and Graduate Education. Blank has served for many years as researcher at the Schools of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania and Drexel University. He will be responsible for increasing research dollars allocated to Temple and leading the growth of new research opportunities. He will start his new job in May.